Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon again with the Metaphysical Hour. And we are live tonight. The only way you can tell we're live, I have to give the date. This is May the 4th, 2012. So we do have a live show tonight. So if anyone wants to call in, we can we welcome their calls. Let me get out the toll-free number if you do want to call in. It's one eight 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 six two seven six zero zero eight 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 six two seven six zero zero eight. And Julia's not with us tonight. She's still over in England at the other office. And I think she's probably glad she's not on because when I call her this time, it's usually midnight over there. And she has to stay up most of the night to do help me with the show. (laughs) So tonight she's getting to sleep in. And we have a very special guest on tonight. And she's been on my show before, it was over a year ago. But still, it's always good to have her back on again. Our guest tonight is Dee Wallace. The D. Wallace, (laughs) (laughs) and she's a really good friend of mine, and we're getting ready to do something together next week, but uh, we're going to be talking a lot about D. and her work and uh, also what we're planning on doing next week when we get out to L.A., but most of you probably know that D. has done numerous movies. She's best known as the mother in E.T., The Extraterrestrial. And after that, I know, Dee, you've done a lot of horror films, and you're, yes, you know, you're I, also doing a lot of uh, made people, you know. <laughs> But didn't you say one time people were asking you how you could be spiritual after all these horror shows you'd made? Uh, yes, and I easily said, well, I've been studying fear for 30 years. And, um, you know, what else, <laughs> what else do we have to heal, Dolores, but our own fears, right? And, um, so. That's it, true. It, so, yes, we're, the monster that most of us are running away from is ourself and our fears and our limiting beliefs. So, uh, I don't think there's a dichotomy yeah, there, there at all, quite frankly. Because we have these inside of us, and, uh, you know, we're fighting our own demons, really. Absolutely. There isn't any real demons. It's just what we create. Uh, I was and we doing put inside a, of us, and that's what holds Yeah, I was doing a private back, you know? for um, yeah. um, a guy this morning, and literally what the channel said was uh, it was all about he couldn't forgive himself for something that had happened that he did. And literally, the channel, the information of the channel says, and that's what a, a sin is all about. Because if if you're judging yourself uh-huh. or limiting yourself or not loving yourself in any way, you're literally sinning against yourself. And um, that would make a lot of sense. A- absolutely. And because, because, yeah, because we because, are, you the, know, that's what I'm always talking in my lecture too. You know about forgiving your forgiving those you have done harm to you too, and it's very very important. The forgiveness is the key to a lot of things. Well, but yeah, we because about forgiving ourselves. If we if we keep focused on forgiving um, or not forgiving, as the case may be, then we a lot of times don't move into love, and love is the most powerful force in the world. It is the creative force itself. Yeah, it's, so. Anything that takes you out of the love of yourself. It's the key to everything. Absolutely. And especially yeah, if we don't love ourselves, you know, if we don't love ourselves, then we're shutting off the power of our own energy, which is the power that we have to create with. So, uh, But like the man says, he, he said he can't forgive himself. But everybody makes mistakes. That's what life is all about. And well, I would say, what did you learn from that experience? Exactly. And when we got to that, and learning. when we got to the lesson or what he was supposed to learn, which is literally nobody and no thing 
can take love away from you if you don't give it. So the source of all creation is always coming back to love. And if you don't love yourself first, then through the perspective of who you are, you see the rest of the world as energy that cannot be loved also. So you're the key. Yeah. The buck stops with well, us. I can see where he comes from because, because, you know, I see a lot of clients also, and we're really both of us therapists in that way. We try to counsel with people. And I have a lot of them, too. They they talk about their childhood and how terrible it was and uh, the terrible things that were done to them. And they also talk about things they've done to people. I had a client the other day, and, you know, in my work, I call it the subconscious that speaks to them, although it is the higher self, the, uh, you know, the um, higher consciousness, the oversoul. Mm -hmm. It's what you call the big E. <laughs> but when that came through, and we were getting ready to do the sessions, and he said, but I've done some bad things in my life. Maybe they won't talk to me. Yeah. I said, they don't care what you have done. They exactly. love you beyond belief. And I, if we could just grasp that, that no matter what term you use for the higher energy, whether it's God or Buddha or Atman or creative force or universal love, it doesn't judge you. It, it For me... The highest definition of God is uh, unlimited thought of all possibility. And thought cannot judge you. Thought just is, is something yeah. that is there for you to access. And it's open to all of us, all of us, if we ask. And if we get out of our own way and allow it to come in. So um, we were talking a lot about the brain for, and the brain is something that I'm really focusing on on my talk shows right now. And I was told to bring in this information for your listeners, and literally this came in a half an hour ago, that the old definition yeah. of choice is this or this, dualities, polarities, heart or brain. I've got to choose one or the other. That's the old definition of choice. The new definition of choice for the new earth and the only choice that's left to us is the choice of the one being of consciousness that we all are. And that includes our energy on all dimensions, in all time, space, continuums. And literally the information came through, Dolores, that within our, our uh, spinal fluid, it is held the limitation yep. of this yes no pattern now our spinal fluid of course mm. connects with our brain and when we use our entire brain okay. then our brain is our heart and our heart is our brain everything is working together we are unlimited thought and all possibility and therefore we are the gods of ourselves so uh, we balance that all i haven't but even had a chance what? I was I was thinking the brain though was what we connect the ego to, and that's where the judgment and everything comes in, and we have to learn to separate that part. So that's what I'm always thinking of the brain in that way. Well, but who's in charge you know, of like the conscious mind? You know, who's in charge of our brain? Who's in charge of everything about us? We are. So. We are the ones... We should be. Most people... Well that's, that. <laughs> well, that's true. And one of the reasons is because within the spinal fluid, we have this genetic predisposition to uh, yes, no, either, or. I have it. I don't have it. Um, I, I made it. Now it went away. You know, those are all the patterns that we, we live in. I'm happy. Now I'm depressed. Uh, those polarities that we believe are a truth, but they don't have to be a truth when we're using our, our whole brain, which is our heart, and our whole heart, which is our brain. So I haven't even had a chance to tell you yeah. about this incredible formula. 
Uh, I know that you have spoken, yeah. uh, I believe, with my, one of my healing partners, Jared Hewitt. And Jared and I, over three yeah. years ago, Dolores, had this um, formula channeled to us. But we were told, you, you don't use it, put it away, it's not ready. And last week, about a week and a half ago, we were both calling each other with the information that we had just gotten that we can uh, bring this formula out. Okay, everybody, we're sorry about that. The little gremlins have been busy on the line again. You know, sometimes they like to get in there and play and cause mischief. But I'm glad he didn't stop us before, you know, before she gave the formula anyway. So I told Dee to hold that thought while we were reconnected, and I think my line is a lot better now. Okay, Dee, go ahead. You said that you were given this formula about three years ago. Yes, over three years ago. We didn't understand it. It's a compilation of uh, frequencies uh, and symbols, uh, many of which we've researched on the Internet and can't find duplication of. Um, And we were told that this is the formula for uh, all manifestation of creation. So it was interesting to me, Dolores, that, when I got it back out and looked at it, from the bottom to the top, the top is unity is God. At the very bottom, the very first thing that they gave me, which is kind of the core of everything, is what we were talking yeah. about, is self-love. And mm, as I okay. looked at the formula from the bottom to the top, in absolutely perfect sequential order, It's everything, uh, subject by subject, that has been channeled to me over the last three years uh, on my shows. So so we went from loving yourself to choice to uh, power to polarities and dualities. And, And at the very top is all of these massive frequencies of the brain And after that is joy, and after that is the unity is God. And I've gotten for a long time that love and joy are the reason that we're here. That's the purpose that we're here. And um, when you live in love and joy, everything is created for you. But we keep wanting to go to our minds to figure everything out. So um, this whole... Um, and, and obviously, and did I know it yesterday? No. But obviously, a, na- a lot of this information, this brand new information that's coming in, is something that I'm going to be uh, integrating into the workshop next week. That's what I was thinking. I think you need to bring this up at the workshop next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, It'd yeah. Be very important. Everybody at the but, workshop, by the way. I've will been getting read- similar stuff. It's different, but over several years. Oh, you know, the crop circles, all of this, everything dealing with symbols. Yeah. And I have people who said they are always getting symbols in their mind. One man said he lays on a couch at night and a beam of light comes through the window, all full of geometric uh, symbols. And they all want to know what's going on. Well, what I was told is each one of these symbols are blocks of information, and they were inserted into the brain on the cellular level. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, what do they mean? And they said, at that time, you weren't allowed to know what they meant because it wasn't time. We weren't ready. But that they said, whenever it's in your brain, and by the time you need it, it which is now, in the time it's we're living now, right yeah. now, when it comes to the time you were going to need it, you would have the information and you wouldn't even know where it came from. So I think this all ties together. We've had this, and they've been saying, Hold it, you won't understand it. But now is the time. Well, and I want to speak to that for a minute, 
because you can understand the experience of it, but you can't understand it from the mental perspective because yeah. it, it is an experience. It's an experience of creation itself. And so um, I have a lot of people um, uh, that have looked at the formula and held the formula and gone, oh, my God, I went into an immediate experience. I can't explain it, but it was like bliss. Now, those are the people, and I, I want everybody to hear this. The formula works if your heart is open and if you choose to take responsibility for your own creation. Yeah, because remember, no matter, everything in your life you have created, you put there. That's right. If you don't like it, you just uncreate it. It's really very simple. We're the ones that make it hard. Absolutely, Dolores. And you and I, we couldn't believe how much we were on the same page when we toured last summer. Uh, I, <laughs> I had the best time with you because I was hearing it from an entirely different point of view, and we were saying the same thing. And, um, well, that's why I published your book, The Big E, because you're saying the same thing that I've been saying. We're just calling it something different. But in my work, they say it's okay. We don't have a name anyway. You can call us anything you want. Right. But it all goes back to the same, what do you want to call source or whatever it is that has all knowledge and all information. So it, no, it's accurate if we're getting the same information. And it's open and it, to all of us, but we have to we have to hold and allow that possibility in our you know in our consciousness. Almost started to say in our minds, in our consciousness. So you know, like Einstein said, you 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 can't fix some something from the old thought that created what you want to fix. You know, and if you refuse to think a new thought, then the new thought can't come in. Yeah. And um. Um, I just, as a matter of fact, on my e-blast that I just sent out today, I put another one of Einstein's quotes about how he rarely got to any of his big discoveries through his mind. And um, discover discovery was what? He rarely got to any of his major discoveries through his mental thinking mind. Oh, that he was accessing his heart-brain connection, which opened him to receiving all the symbols, the possibilities that he was looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah. And what I think is so, what I know is so um, exciting and empowering about our workshop next week is we're, through using both of our talents, we're going to put the past life, which gives you information about why you're here and what you're here to work on now and, and what may be affecting the success of that. And then uh, I'm going to take you, uh, take everybody through exactly how the creation process happens right now and where we're falling out on it. And then we're going to do the future regression, right, for this life and beyond yeah. to see how powerful your life can be now, you can live literally the future now, you need to live the future now if you're going to create the future that you want then. And yeah. I've never done a workshop like this. I don't know of anybody that's done a workshop like this, and I'm truly excited for what's uh, going to be made available for all these people coming, which, by the way... Um, if anybody's interested in the formula, you can find it at the creationformula.com and everyone that attends the workshop will receive one for free. And you'll be explaining it and breaking it down too that way. Um as much as I can. Yes. <laughs> well, you'll have more information by that time, you know you will, you know. But as see that's when everything's thing, going on you know, sure that's true. Past, whenever we wanted to create something, it took a long time. It, you know, because that's on purpose, because if we cre we thought something and it was created instantly, a lot of times it would be a disaster, because you know how human beings are. They say one thing, and then they definitely don't want that. Yeah. So that's why we were given time 
to be sure that was what we really wanted and to think about it before it was brought into creation. But right now, things are changing. Everything is so speeded up that things are happening faster, and we are creating much faster. So the abilities are really opening up. There's uh, Everything is happening. It's all changing right now. And, and I, I in my lectures, people are understanding it. They're getting it. They say, yeah. yeah, we wondered what was going on, but they can't put their finger on it. Well, again, uh, like we were talking about earlier, Dolores, we were in our own way. If we have beliefs that uh, it's dangerous to happen too fast or we can't have too much too quickly yeah. or we're not worthy to, to create miracles, I mean, you know, we have to believe in miracles. If we're going to create them, right? Yeah. We have to open ourselves to the possibility that we just might be the miracle that creates the miracles. <laughs> but you know how it was in the past. You just weren't allowed to think that way. Exactly. Mostly in and, church, and you know, and everybody would hold you back because, you know, you're just a poor human who can't, who is full of sin and you can't amount to anything. Yeah, well, but I'm over that one, are you? All this potential, and we haven't been using it. But now's the time. It's time to open all of this up, and we're living in a very exciting time in history. Oh, boy, are we. Every morning I get up. talking about the workshop. No, yeah. I've, never, I've never done a workshop like this before. So whenever you, uh, you know, propose the idea, I, I'm thinking, I'm not sure what she wants me to do here. <laughs> But uh, it is something totally different, and I can feel it's going to have a lot of power to it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, first of all, Dolores, we wouldn't have been given the vision if we weren't supposed to carry it out. Yeah. So when I'm given information like that, and and I often am, like daily, I, I move on it, and I trust it. Um, on my shows and in my acting, I never plan out what I'm going to do. I may have a an outline, you know, but um, I wait to be told. I wait for the channel to open up and the information to come through. And it's always unbelievably beyond whatever I could come up with. Don't you find that? Oh, yeah. But I noticed last year when we were touring around the United States, Every show we did, you were different because you said you had no idea what was going to come out till you got up there. Yep. And I, so I like that. It's fascinating to watch you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And just for your listeners, um, so they're clear about what, I, what, my, what my strengths are is literally teaching the creation process and then being able to extrapolate from someone's energy any of the limiting beliefs and fears that are or patterns that are in your way of what you consciously say you want. Uh, For example, a lot of people will ask me, well, where's my block around money? Half the time it's not about money. It's about self-worth or fear of power, you know, or thinking you're not religion, wanted. or thinking you what? know because the way you were raised, you know, oh yeah, money is bad, and you're not worth the having. You you could never amount to anything. You could never have anything. We have a lot of garbage and baggage we have to get rid of. Oh, but, yeah, money think? is just that was what they tell me in my work all the time. It's just energy, so yes. it can be manipulated. It can be used. Once you Absolutely. understand how to use it. And, Dolores, you and I were both talking last summer that, you know, if we looked at the world and us as just people who were here to play with energy and learn about energy and learn how we uh, create from energy, that there's no good, there's no bad, there's no right or no wrong. It's just yeah. different experiences of energy, then we could move away from the judgment and the harshness of what we hold toward ourselves and others. Yeah, it's all lessons, and it's the experiences, and what did you learn from those experiences? Yes. That was what I was told in my work. They said the greatest thing I could tell people was the main lesson you were here on Earth for 
was to learn how to manipulate energy. Me too. I get the same I said, information. What does that mean? And they said that means to create. Yes. So that's the main thing we're here to learn how to do is take energy and learn to manipulate it to create. And so many of us don't. We just go day to day, take what's given to us, even if we're not happy with it, we don't like it, but we just keep going along with it. Well, we're not taught that we have no control over us at all. We're no, taught not that realizing the time we're little. Power we, we, have. we have a wonderful power that we're not using. Well, we're beginning to... And I know they're to... arguous with us about it, but I've seen it happen. I see it all the time in my office, and you probably do too, don't oh, you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I do. I, I actually uh, uh, have been working with a gentleman who's had full-blown AIDS, uh, for years, yeah. and um, we've been working together, and they just declared him age three, um, which is quote unquote an impossibility. Uh, and I know that you have seen many successes with cancer and other diseases that you work with, also, Dolores. We're not doctors, oh, we have to say and that. And also the one with AIDS, because I put it in my new book that his lesson was, uh, was judgment. Yeah, he was afraid people were going to judge him. Yes, I get and the so same that thing. That's what that's happened, the core. created the whole thing. That is the Look core. how powerful your mind is that you can create these diseases, you can create these illnesses. If you can create something like that, well, then you can create the opposite and have anything you want in your life. That's how powerful your mind is. Yes, but see, people have to get past that belief, well, I didn't create it, it just happened to me. That's, yeah, God that's did that victim me. mentality that doesn't allow us to manipulate the energy. Yeah. And look what horrible thing God did to me. <laughs> yeah. God didn't do anything. We do it all to ourselves. But, you know, that's too hard for most some people to take responsibility that they created the things in their life. Well, we but, were given free will, we know that, and so uh-huh. we are, in essence, the gods of ourselves. And it's up to oh, us. Boy, he's got it loud, so we can hear it this time. Okay, is there somebody there? Yes, and Dolores, uh, this is Charles. I've been to your place uh, end of 2004 before Christmas uh, from Malaysia. Yeah, well, I'm just Where listening to the radio talking from? about... Uh, where are you from calling Asia. from? Asia. Asia. Yeah, from, okay, from, I know this show yeah, goes from, all from, over from, the from, world. From. Okay, yeah. What is yeah. your question? Um, yeah, uh, I'm just talking about the uh, creation of energy, but somehow, uh, and subconsciously, um, uh, in in this two years, uh, uh, while I was walking or while I was sitting, sometimes I create vortex. Uh, I can't see it, but I do some hand sign. But uh, my friend, who are very psychic, noticed that uh, it is a vortex energy light circulating around myself. I don't know why. Subconsciously, I do it. Okay, Dee, you want to answer him? Well, so what is your question, darling? The vortex energy swirls around you, and what's your question? Yeah, why I'm what doing do you want this? It? Why? Is it supposed that I'm? Yeah, because I I do it subconsciously with some hand sign while I'm sitting. But uh-huh. uh, my friend who was very psychic, um, sitting next to me, some um, visiting me, sometimes saying that I'm I'm creating a vortex energy. Um. Uh, well, I get that's true, and I get it's positive. But you sound worried about it. You're calling uh, not in. Not worried, but I. I so why? Yeah, but because uh, it, uh, you're calling. You're literally I, calling I, in I, a uh, healing energy. A healing okay. energy? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Th- my next true, question would be my next question would be why are you calling in a healing energy? Do you know consciously or not? No. Okay. So I'm invoking the new formula sheet. But give me a song, honey. Any song that comes into your mind. A song. She she wants you to give a song. Song. To say the name of a song. Well, I, I don't feel any song, but like pure, just t- t- 
tone. I don't know. It's just like tone. Kind of like <laughs> well, it, she she it. works by people saying a name of a song, and that triggers things in her. Can you think of a song, a name of a song? And it'll trigger her answer. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, I, I think the whole okay. point is that you don't have a song. You don't have a life song. I don't song. have a song. I know the... No, and, uh, and that's, that's, I, I, please, hold on, hold on, just, be just, quiet, just let me, me answer you, okay? Be quiet, let me answer you. You don't have a song, you don't have a song in your heart, you don't have a life song, and you are calling in this vortex energy to, well, for want of a better word, the words my channel is giving me is save you. And what you have to realize is you have to consciously open your heart and allow your heart to sing. Allow your heart to be in joy. And then you won't have to call in any energy to save you because you will have nothing to save yourself from. Right now you're trying to save yourself from yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. Does that resonate okay. with you? Anyway, Does that make sense? Yeah, I think Does so. that make sense to you? Yeah, a big emphasis, but I really enjoy uh, listening to this and uh, reading your, your books that uh, published recently, the, the, the three, three weeks and the new earth and the complete universe four. Uh -huh. And uh, it's uh, many bits and pieces of the information uh, that are written on the book. Uh, uh, Confirm what I have learned from my master, who who passed away, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Okay, and darling, your do you know that your heart okay. closed okay. when your Sorry. master? Okay, uh, Please go on your show. Do you know okay. that your okay. heart closed? Thank you. Is telling you. Do you know that your heart closed when your master passed away? Yeah, maybe okay. that's it. He wants you to open okay, it up. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Open your heart up. Thanks. You're not serving yourself or him. He taught you better than that. Live with an open heart. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I understand. Thank you very much, both of You're you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, love you. Bye-bye. Okay. Be happy. Yep. Open your hearts so and be joyful. That's really all you have to know, right, Dolores? Yes. They're always saying that in my work, bring joy into your life. Yes. They said, we just go, go, go all the time. And they said, just, you know, stop smell the roses, you know, relax and enjoy. Don't take everything so seriously. Oh, boy. They're telling yeah. me that all the time. And it's kind of hard because, you know, we are going all the time, the two of us, anyway. Well, right. and... You know, I do consciously, uh, I, I, I stay very conscious to try and create a balance in my life. Enough fun, mm -hmm. enough nights where um, I don't have anything to do, I don't have to travel, uh, and then a lot of opportunities like our weekend where, um, where I, I get to go out and create and um, play with energy and help uh, affect lives and make money. So yeah. there's a, a balance. And what I found, Dolores, what is uh, everybody says to me, I mean, almost every interviewer says to me, my God, D, I looked at your website, which is IamDWallace.com, by the way, and they say, okay. I, I don't understand. How can you do so much? You just work all the time. And you know the first thought that comes up to me is I don't feel like I'm working at all. Yeah, see, I get that all. we got a caller, but I just wanted to finish this thought here. I get that all the time, too. They say, where do you get your energy? Because I'm going all the time, too. But when you're doing what you really love, you found your passion, what you really want to do, it's not work. And you don't really get tired. That's the difference. Yep, it's like great okay, stuff. we got a caller there. Um, hello, who's there? How you doing, Dolores? This is Alfonso. Hi, okay, Alfonso. Where are you calling from? 
I'm calling from Alabama, Dolores. Oh, okay. Okay, do you have a question? Okay, Dolores. Yes, ma'am. Um, she said something about, um, I know the last caller, um, he was talking about vortex energies or whatever. But you said your, the way your ability works is to get a reading on someone, you ask them about a song? Yes. Yeah, seem really... Well, okay, so you understand how the tarot cards work, right? Yes, ma'am. You're reading, you're reading energies, basically, right? I'm reading energies, yeah. In, the, in, the, in relation to each other. I'm reading energies, and what I use uh, are five sheets that, um, well, are a compilation of about 18 years of work. And sometimes they direct me to a phrase or a paragraph in a book. Sometimes they ask for a song. Sometimes they ask for a movie. Sometimes they take me to a play. All of those things, just like a tarot card, open up um, my channel the way I work, and the information just drops in because I instantaneously make the connection. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You have a question you're interested in? Yes, ma'am. So your book, The Big E, does it, it tells, um, I know, I was looking at it as you um, gave the website, and I didn't get quite what your book was was about. I read some of the highlights on it, just the, the questions to things. Um, okay. Oh, um, let me, let me well, Dolores, I'm sorry. Dolores uh, actually publishes two of my books, Conscious Creation, which is exactly what it t- it is. It's channeled information about how to create consciously. And The Big E. Now, The Big E is a fun book. Um, the Big E is energy. And in The Big E, we take all of the um, phrases that we were raised with by our parents, all of the things that we were uh, usually controlled by in our lives, like... Uh, pretty is as pretty does, and you can make take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And um, if you get lemons, make lemonade, stuff like that. And we, in a page and a half or two pages, describe what they really mean uh, in energetic terms. Because a lot of these phrases uh, were taught to control us and kind of... Uh, deciphered as religiously based, but in energetic terms, they're incredibly empowering. For example, you can give a person, let's say you wanted to share with your mother all this work that you know is the truth for you, right? About extraterrestrials or uh, manipulation of energy or any of that. And let's just say your mother uh, was a devout Catholic. You can take her all the books. You can take her to seminars. You can uh, have her watch a million programs. If she doesn't drink that, want to drink that water, honey, she's not going to drink that water. So it's Agreed. not up for us to create anyone else. They have to create themselves. We can uh, offer information to them. But bottom line, you've got to take the responsibility to create you. And so yeah. it's a whole book of a lot of great sayings like that and the truths that are really behind them. Oh, wow. I mean, I guess this, I guess you on Dolores' program kind of speaks to some, some synchronicity to me because me and my wife was actually just discussing about how it's just been very empowering to just take responsibility for our life and our actions and just, it feels good. So I'm going to buy your books. So thank you. <laughs> well, great. Thank you, baby. Uh, so, so thank you, Dolores, as always, and thank you. So y'all have a good night. You too, baby. Okay. You have a good evening then. All right. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Isn't yeah, that synchronistic that he and his wife were just, some of these are people that call in a lot, and I think he was one. Okay, let's take this next caller then. Somebody there? Hello? Hello. Uh, is it me? Yeah, hello. Yes, you're on. Oh, and, okay, <laughs> yeah, this is Dolores. 
Yeah, what's your name? Hello. Dolores. What's your name? Her name is Dolores. Dolores. Oh. Yeah. Where, where are you calling from? From Florida. Florida, okay. Uh, what's your uh, question? Dolores. Pardon? Yeah, what's, what's your, your question? question Pardon? I'm not sure that I have a question. Uh, my name is spelled with a D-E. I have talked with Dolores on BBS radio before, and okay. I do receive email from D. Wallace. And uh, I have emailed a lot of information to D. Wallace. Uh, and I just thought it would be fun. I don't know what this would imply at all. But where two or three to get are gathered together, there I am. So that's well, the reason I called in, just because of the name. Okay. Dolores, are you on my email list, baby? Yes, I am. Okay, what's your last I name? haven't been able to tune in to your 11 a.m. Uh, show yet to talk with you, but I have sent you a lot of email. What's your last name so I can look up your emails and I know who you are? You you know at www.eggoflife, uh, and I sent you information on Zora. Oh, okay. Now I know who you are, gorgeous. Now okay. you know who I am. Now I know who you are. And she's talking about I, I have two free call-in shows, uh, uh -huh. one on Monday nights at 5 uh, Pacific Daylight Time and one at 8 o'clock Thursday morning at Pacific Daylight Time. And you can click right on those if you go to imdwallace.com. Uh, it'll take you right there. So, well, you're telling me that you haven't had a chance to call in Thursday. If you had a chance to call in Thursday, would you have a question? I might have. I'm not sure. I keep hearing you talking about I am, you know, about being worthy. And uh, if you're worthy, you're able to manifest whatever it is you want. But as far as my worthiness is concerned, I really do believe I am totally worthy of receiving everything. Uh, and I, I have believed yes that. that. So are you receiving everything you want? Pardon? Are you receiving everything that you want? No. Okay. Well, if you feel like back. you're worthy to receive it and you're not, then mm -hmm. I would ask for more. <laughs> I've asked for a whole lot. No, I get, I get a no on that. So let's see where you're falling out. On that, so we're going to claim the new formula. You know, good. You did that with me. She right. I've right. been claiming that as of today when I first heard about it. Ah, because I do. Okay, I do play your episodes every Friday when they come in after Thursday. Can you give me a song? I've gone Dora? through your. Give me Pardon? a song, baby. Yeah, oh, give Lordy. her a song comes into your mind, Dolores. I know. I don't know that I have a song in my heart either. <laughs> well, um, we you see, we have a theme going. Uh -huh. You do. It's interesting, Dolores, because you do have a song, but you don't know that you do, which is the same okay. thing as not having one. Right. So you have to acknowledge the joy and magnificence and beauty of you and then you'll hear your song. And that mm -hmm. is, is the biggest part of it. Well, I do plan. have one that really turns me on, and that is Justin Hayward's song. I know you're out there somewhere. <laughs> I know you're out there somewhere. So are you looking for a relationship, Dolores? Uh, I could use one, yeah. Well, that's very different than are you consciously wanting to create one right now? Well, I think about it a lot, and I do ask about it a lot, but it yeah, seems but that's like... Not just, that's not committing to create it. And that, you see, is what most of us do. We think about what we want a lot, and we wish we had it, and we bemoan the fact that we don't, but we never commit 
to the creation of it. Yeah, that puts no it compliance, off. It puts in it down other words. The road. What, what, Dolores Cannon, what did you say? I said that puts it off, that puts it down the road. Yep. Instead of putting it right now, creating it right now. You have to commit to what you want, guys. You see, if you want money, you yeah, have to I get... commit to being the experience of money and loving the money that you want. You have to be in harmony with it. Right. You're waiting. Most of us yeah, are waiting to get the money in order to feel good about money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I uh, know about being, be money, be love, be this, be that. You I know mean, about intellectually, it. I know that. Yeah, but that uh, that but. doesn't create it, you see. Those were the key words, baby cakes, right there. Intellectually, right. I know about it. Okay. But that's yeah. why that. I'm talking about this whole brain stuff, because... When we're using our whole brain, right now, when you say intellectually I understand it, you're only talking about your mind. When we use right, I and activate that. our entire brain, it is our heart, and our heart is our brain. So everything, then, is an experiential knowing. So... I want you to drop down into your heart and and choose to open your heart right now because there you go. It seems. It wasn't open when you called. It seems like I'm trying. I've been on the spiritual path for a long time, and I have gathered enormous amount of information, and I'm always sharing that information. It's not about the information. It's about yeah. the experience. You have to open your heart right. now and experience the love, experience the joy. You know, as an actress, I can study a part from now to doomsday and never bring it alive into experience. Mm-hmm. And it's a really good metaphor for life. That we must move into the experience of bliss, awesomeness, divine love. And you don't right. I understand that in that your mind. I, I understand that when you have... have caller right. on the line and we're coming up to the time to stop. Uh, you know, I want to see what this other one wants, too. Okay, but well, I've given her all given the information. Has given you a lot to think about? Pardon, Dolores, has she given you a lot of things to think about? Well, everything she says I have thought about because I hear her on a radio program every week. Okay. All so, right. Well, that's But evidently I'm not making the applications that I need to make, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like drop We've got down to in your heart. It and it. We have one more caller, and I think that's going to be the last one as we come up to the hour. So thanks for calling in. Thank you. Okay. Good night. And we have one more caller I heard on the line beep. Is anybody there? Hello, Dolores? Hello. Do we have a caller? Hello, Dolores? Yeah. uh, Give her your name and where you're calling from, and we don't have a lot of time to talk, but let's see what it is you want. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Dolores. My name is Mary, and I'm calling from Seattle, Washington. I've made an appointment to see one of your hypnotherapists, and I want to ask you specifically, Dolores, um, I've come up with a lot of questions I want to ask the therapist, but given your long experience with this work, can you give me any ideas of the kinds of questions that a person might totally overlook? This might be the only opportunity I ever have to work with this deep hypnosis technique. And I don't want to miss an important question that that will really be revealing to me. And I'd appreciate any insights you have. Well, you're the one who knows your own questions. 
That's why I have people coming in with four or five pages of questions. <laughs> and when I start reading them, I find out a lot of them are just redundant. They're asking the same question again and again, just wording it a little differently. So a lot of times there are just some main things that everybody wants to know, but you're the only one that knows what's happening in your own life. But a lot of times the questions are about physical problems, but I, what I call the universal question, see, everybody wants to know that comes to see me is, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And am I on the right track? But a lot of people want to know, should they change careers or should they uh, move? It's all personal to you, whatever is the main one that you want to know about. People want to know have, advice it, about their children, their family. But uh, just write down what it is you want to know. And Mary? this therapist you're going to, make sure they use my technique. Because oh, some people say they are, and they're really not. So may, if they've taken the class, they're supposed to be using my technique. So you yeah. ask her to yeah. use that. And, you know, right. she's going to be talking to you a lot and getting to know you, and you'll have plenty of time to go over what's really bothering you and just make a general list of what it is you really want to know and go from there. Mary? <laughs> and I really hope you're okay. going to have success. Uh, Mary? Yeah. Can I tell you yes. what I'm hearing through my channel? Yes. Um, ask what is in your way of accepting that you're the creation of all creation? That's the biggest question you can ask. Hmm. What is in the way of, of, of accepting? Can you repeat that? That you are the creation of all creation. That you are the creation of all creation. Okay. Yes, yeah, so like you that. would say it... What is in my way of accepting that I am the creation of all creation? What do I need to yeah. know about that? Because if you aren't getting Boy, what I you want in your that. life, you are in your own way. But you yeah, have plenty of time you know, to talk I, to the therapist and get, you know, get to everything worked out with her. So just relax and work with her. Okay, is that all okay. right? That's okay. That's fine. Thank you, Delo. Thank you both. Okay. Good and have a good session with her. You can let me thank, know how it turns out then by emailing. Okay. okay we're going to have to stop uh, the callers okay. because we're coming up to the hour. So I appreciate you calling in, Mary. Okay. But, Dee, I do want to talk a little I'm going to sign off here for now, but I do want to remind everybody our workshop that we're going to be doing is a two-day seminar and it's next Saturday and Sunday. What is that, the 12th and the 13th? 12th and the 13th. Of May, and it's going to be in the Embassy Suites South, out by the airport, by LAX Airport, if anyone just wants to show up out there. There's two Embassy Suites, one north and one south. Make sure you go to the south one, Embassy Suites South at LAX. And we're, it's from 10 to 5 each day. And there's going to be a lot of exciting things going on, and we're not really sure what we're going to do, so a lot of things can happen that we're not even expecting. But uh, we're going to be there the whole two days and working with you on creating what you want to create, finding out what's holding you back. Uh, do you want to say anything about that? Um I just want to say that uh, if there's anybody out there that wants to move out into the empowerment, uh, into miraculous manifestation that you want to create right now, if there are any healers um, that want to uh, expediate and expand their healing modalities, come to this weekend. You will not be disappointed. Okay. And if you want more details... You can check on my website, and that's just DoloresCannon.com, or you can check on D. You have your on your information on yours too, don't you? you give out your website. Hello. Yeah, give out your website. My website is I am A M 
D D E E Wallace W A L L A C E dot com. Okay, if you check on either one of those websites, you'll get more information. And I think it's going to be a fantastic weekend. And the, may the board, we're going to find, have some interesting experiences next weekend. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up to the hour, and we're going to have to stop. And I think it went very fast. But, Dee, I want to thank you for being on tonight. Thank and you I for think having those me. listening really got a lot out of what you've been talking about gave them some very valuable information. So I want to thank you for being on the show. All right, loves. I'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. We'll be coming in on Friday. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.